gozaimasu, konnichiwa, konbanwa, for whenever you're listening to the Joshi Pod, your weekly podcast about the world of Japanese women's wrestling. Joshi Wrestling, I'm your host, Eric Howard, coming to you from beautiful San Diego, California. Guys, I'm sure as you've seen on the news, California's on fire. Uh, I'm safe, my family's safe, had some loved ones displaced, but uh, so far everybody's alive and well. Um... But, uh, yeah, as you guys know, people in Australia, people around the world know that these brush fires are pretty unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen. We've had a lot of heat, uh, a lot of wind and heat, and those combinations are are bad for fires here, especially in California. So if you're uh, affected by those right now, you're listening to this, uh, sending love, uh, sending uh, my best wishes to you all. My DMs are open, so if you need anything, let me know. I'll be happy to help you guys. Um, Yeah, so... It's one of these things we, we, we deal with in, in California a little too frequently. Um, uh, moving on from that, uh, this week I announced uh, the end of the Joshi Pod. Uh, it's going to be the last one's going to air on October 31st, exactly one year after it launched. Uh, I really enjoy the process of, I actually, I enjoy talking to the people, the guests. I'm not enjoying the process of trying to hunt them down and convincing them to do the show. And by no means am I bitter about them not doing the show. I understand why people don't want to do the show. And I, I have no hard feelings about people not wanting to do the show. But, yeah, it's it just gets to be uh, um, a burden. And it's time to to find another project maybe to work on. Uh, I'll still be around on uh, Twitter and such. And uh, I'll tell you this now. Leave your... Stay subscribed because you never know when a bonus one will pop up if something arises and f- something falls in my lap and I get the opportunity to talk to somebody. I'm definitely going to do that and I'll release it to you guys. But uh, you'll still see, see me in the chat rooms for uh, shows and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm not going anywhere uh, except I'm not going to be doing the podcast much longer. That being said, I'm going to try to cram as much as much as I can here in the next uh, month or so to put out as many shows as you can. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be my friends. It's going to be wrestlers. It's going to be everybody in between and, uh, try to get you guys to, uh, know some people that I want you to know, uh, before I, I head out. And, um, I do want to thank you guys for downloading the episode last week. I had a couple episodes last week that got pretty good, uh, traction, uh, crystal, the queen of Philippines wrestling and Kai Kobayashi from Terrace house, who was a roommate with, uh, Hanakamura on Terrace House. Uh, some people got a little um, bitter towards having Kai on the show and said they didn't want to hear from him and, and what have you. And I get that. I understand that as well, too. But uh, I, I thought uh, it was important for, for him to share his story. He, he wanted to to an English audience. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful I, he, he chose my platform to, to do that on because uh, um, <laughs> Ironically enough, I just got my Hanakamura Pro Wrestling Tees t-shirt that uh, Kyoko had put up on Pro Wrestling Tees, and uh, I got it. I literally just opened it up and tweeted about it. But uh, yeah, I think it's real important uh, for 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 me. I wanted to I wanted to hear it. I mean, because I want to hear it doesn't mean you guys want to hear it. And uh, yeah, it, it, sometimes uh, I'm gonna tell you the show's for me. Sometimes, guys, it may not be what you guys want to hear. Uh, I apologize, but uh, it, it's what I wanted to hear, and I wanted to hear Kai. I wanted to talk to Kai, and uh, I was incredibly thankful for him for him to uh, to join me. This week, the big main event interview is with Layla Hirsch, legit Layla Hirsch. She's awesome. She's so awesome. Uh, she just came off a tour of Stardom uh, earlier this year. I don't think she's wrestled since that tour because of COVID, but uh, yeah, she, she did a tour of stardom. Uh, she's so wonderful to talk to. She tells some uh, fun stories So listen to that. I feel terrible because I kept confusing her with uh, the Joshi names and she got confused a couple times, but that's my fault for, for throwing all these names out of her like bam, 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 bam. So uh, forget, <laughs> don't blame her, blame me. I'm the one that's kind of goofed it up and, and uh, said a bunch of names to her <laughs> in rapid succession. And uh, yeah, she got uh, my fault for confusing her. Uh, you guys saw on Twitter, somebody's agreed to do the podcast. Somebody who I've wanted to do the podcast for pretty much this entire time. So uh, that's uh, planned and coming up soon. 
Uh, I've got a couple other people who've uh, agreed to do the podcast and people I've really wanted to be on the podcast for quite some time as well. Uh, we're going to get them in as many as we can before the uh, the end of the, the podcast next month. And uh, guys, I, I sincerely want to say all the thank yous to all, all, all the kind words you guys have, have shared with me since I made that announcement. And um, thank you guys for sticking with me. Thank you guys for downloading and staying for these last few episodes. I promise I won't disappoint you. I promise you I'll, I'll do my darndest. I'm not giving up to to put the best product out I can while I'm putting the product out. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go from there. But, uh, again, thank you guys so much. You guys have meant the world to me. And I really appreciate you guys so much. And let's have some fun these last few weeks. Let's uh, enjoy a uh, few more Joshi interviews. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Arigato gozaimasu. Hey guys, Eric back here at the Joshi Pod. Super excited to have legit Layla Hirsch, fresh off her st- uh, stardom tour. Uh, welcome to the show, Layla. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You know, trying to survive this whole pandemic, but I'm doing good. So, yeah, you were almost the start of this year. You were uh, at stardom. Do you know how you got on stardom's radar as far as f- for them to, to select you to come over? Yeah, I have to give the credit to Sumi Sakai. Mm. Uh, it was, it's crazy how like it happened though. Cause, uh, it was, I think it was before Germany. I, uh, I went to some of her classes, uh, in PA, mm-hmm. her cheeseburger. And I think she really liked the fact that I had like a uh, background amateur, you know, and before I left for Germany, she said to me, Hey, Layla, I'm in touch with, uh, with stardom in Japan and we're looking to see if we can get you down there. And I kind of like just like brushed it off like, oh, yeah, OK, you know, because I didn't think it was like realistic at this point, you know. Um, and then it was crazy because when I went to Germany, it was maybe a week before I came home. I uh, it was like maybe 3 a.m. in Germany and Sumi messages me and she's like, hey, I got great news for you. And I was like, all right, I'll reply. OK, what is it? <laughs> And she was like, you're going to go to Japan. And dude, like I started shaking. I was like, no, I'm not like, what are you serious? And the crazy part was, uh, I had just competed in femme fatales. I don't Mm -hmm. know if you know what that is, Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah. So I had just killed it with Lefisto and Taz pulls me aside and he was like, okay, we want to bring you back. And we want you to be in 16 carats. (laughs) <laughs> and then when Sumi told me the, what days I'd be going, I was like, so I had to basically pick whether I would go back to Germany or do Japan. <laughs> so it was like everything was happening at once. And I was like, this is crazy. But, you know, clearly, like, I, I went with Japan. Um, but it was crazy. I was shaking. I couldn't believe it. Um, but it was all thanks to Sumi Sakai. She put in a good word for me. And yeah. And you haven't been wrestling that long. No, like without take out all my injuries, take out this pandemic. I've only been wrestling for two and a half years professionally. Two and that's, a half years. That's amazing to to get to go to to the top promotion in Japan that quickly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, very lucky. <laughs> so, <laughs> how? What was the process like as far as I, I like the 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 background stuff a little bit uh, of how the process is as far as like getting your work visa, all that kind of stuff. What was that process like for you? Um, honestly, like, I had no idea what to do. So I had my mom <laughs> help me out. <laughs> <to be honest. laughs> She's a trooper. So I had to actually go to New York to the embassy. Um, I had to fill out paperwork. Uh, I, dude, I don't even like, like, I feel like it was a long process. Uh, I, it was like more of a waiting game, you know, mm-hmm. because like I had one of the people from Japan, like message me all the stuff that I needed. But then like I had to go to the embassy. Um, and yeah, I don't know if that's like that explains it. It was like a waiting game. I, yeah, I just say. filling out paperwork and then waiting, right? Yeah, because they had to make my uh, visa. So I had to wait for the visa to come in and everything. Um, so, yeah. 
And yeah. how ex- how excited are you or nervous are you waiting to to get to go? Uh, I was very nervous. And also it was like I wanted to post about it, but I was like, no, I should wait for, for it to be official, you know. <laughs> but I was very nervous, very nervous, but excited at the same time because I was like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, because like when I first started professional wrestling, the two biggest promotions I've heard about was stardom in Japan, like going to Japan and WXW in Germany. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was exciting. Mm-hmm. Like, I, when I tell you I was shaking, man, I was shaking. <laughs> I was shaking. I was in such disbelief. Like, oof. Yeah. Did you do anything to prepare yourself physically before you went over? Oh, man, I was a chub chub. I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, after Germany, uh, because I had maybe a month to get ready, I think, or two months, yeah. No, I I mean, I worked out and everything, but I wasn't, I don't know. I would say, like, nah, I was kind of in shape. But, you know, I don't know. I wish I was in better shape. (laughs) So, okay, your flight over to to Japan. Who greets you at the airport? I always like these questions, too. Oh, my God. So, it was Rossi, who's the the booker of stardom, and... It was so funny because, like, once I get off, he kind of explained it to me, or, like, Sonny explained to me, like, where he would be. But I'm, like, looking for 20 minutes, like, where he is. Because, like, once I got to the airport, there was, like, a bunch of people, I guess, waiting outside. Or, like, I don't know how to explain that. But so I was, like, looking around, and I'm just like, okay, where is he? And, like, he was literally right in front of me the whole time, man. (laughs) And I was, like, because, like, I went around a couple times, but then I was like, oh, that must be him. So, like, I tapped him on the shoulder. I was like, hey, are you Rossi? <laughs> you know? <laughs> he wasn't in a fancy suit in, at the airport? I was in a suit. I'm not sure. Like, he had a hat on. And I think he had... I have such a bad memory. I'm so sorry. Like, I have no memory. <laughs> but, I, yeah, he was wearing a hat, I think. But, yeah. So, yeah. How amazing is the airport in Japan? I always, I always tell people, like, the airports in Japan are, like, the best malls in the world. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. I remember. I didn't get, like, a whole tour of the airport. Because, like, when I got there, I just met up with him. And then he just took me to the apartment. So I didn't really get to walk around. But yeah. it, looked, it looked very big and everything. Um, yeah, like, the food there is, like, super fancy. Everything's just super nice there at, at both yeah. airports. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yep. Mm-hmm. So uh, what's your first impression of, like, when you when you land in Japan and... and are you excited? Are you tired? I mean, are you oh, like, man. this is a dream come true? What What's going through your head? So a bit of everything. I was very tired because in total, I think it was a 14 hour flight for me because it was a connecting flight. So it was 14 hours. I am excited. I do like I do. I do get butterflies. Like once I land, I, you know, I have butterflies and they do this often. When you land, Rossi was like, all right, can you give us a little, like, introduction, like, a little <laughs> promo? And I was like, wait, what? Right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, I looked like a mess, but, you know, he was like, just a real quick thing, you know? I was like, all right. But, so, man, the funny, so, um, so, once, so once he picks me up, we, he takes me to, to the, uh, um, the apartment, right? And so we get to the apartment, and it's very different. I don't know, if, like, when you talk to all the people, like, they've ever explained to the apartments, but I was, like, kind of surprised by it. Um, so it, was, it, was, it wasn't what I expected it to be. And How so? Was, um, like, even staying there a little bit longer, because, like, things were broken. The beds mm. were really low. And... I just feel like there was, like, a lot of issues in the apartment. Even, like, when I was talking to one of the other girls who's been there for a good while, like, I just, I don't know how much I can say, but, like, man, I, the beds weren't the most, like, comfiest. And I, like, I was, like, itching every day when I was there. Like, <laughs> it was very uncomfortable. Um, and it was just so funny because I get there and I was, like, I thought the Germany apartment was kind of rough. But then I was like, no, this is this is rougher. Like this is more like more um Is it tiny too? It was a little bit tiny, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like oh my career was broken, like it was just you know, wasn't as clean. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> so who was the who who were the foreigners there with you at the at the apartment? 
so um oh my god okay so jamie hater mm -hmm. uh sasha moth and um zoe sky okay uh so sasha moth was there for like two weeks and then she left but then for the most part i was with uh yeah jamie hater and uh zoe sky so I blame Jamie and Session for destroying everything in the in the apartment. <laughs> I've, I've heard stories about them. Oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. They're a good time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, you, you you moved in, you're settled in, and what? Okay, you, when do you start training, wrestling, all that kind of stuff? What's the what's the schedule like for you when oh you get? Oh my god, there? man, we had a show the next day. We had a the, the, uh, we had a show the next day in Shikiba. No, was it in Shikiba? Yeah, it was in Shikiba. I think I'm saying that right, right? Shikiba. Yep. Yeah. So we had a show, and uh, it was good because, like, once I got there, I talked to uh, Jamie a little bit. Like, she explained to me stuff. But then I I knocked out, man. Like, I just knocked out, and it was like only six o'clock p.m. But it was <laughs> nice because, like, I got some rest, and the show wasn't until I think seven o'clock. Um. But man, and this is this is January second, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I I was shocked. I was like, wow, okay, we really have a show the next day, um, and that was nerve wracking for me. I was so nervous for that match, um, because I was in a triple threat, and we were also on first. But this was my first time calling a match. People that don't speak English, you know, the language barrier that terrified me. Uh, it, yeah. And the people you're, you're in the ring with don't have a ton of experience either. No, no, because yeah, the first they put me with, oh my God, I don't even want to say the names. Cause like, I don't even know if I'm going to pronounce oh, them. Right. Hoshino and Aida. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So both, they were very sweet. And like, when I got there, like they basically kind of had the match called in a way. And they just, you know, I had to just insert my stuff when my spots were coming up. But I remember, man, I would, I remember when I was like calling this match, I was like stressing out because I'm, <laughs> I was stressing out. I was like, oh my god, like they don't understand what I'm saying. Like it's so hard to demonstrate, you know. So it was like that experience. Like I was very nervous. I was like kind of scared to be honest. <laughs> so th then the very next day you have another match. <laughs> yeah. But Yep. And, in the in tag team match. Yes. I yeah. Oh my god. So yeah. to travel and stuff, are you guys taking trains? Are you guys on buses or cars? Or how do you guys get into like Shinkiba? It was uh yeah, we had a van. Okay. We had a van and so Shinkiba was actually very close, so we could take the train, you mm -hmm. know, it wouldn't cost that much. But then when we went to uh Asaka, that's like our furthest trip. That's like five and a half hours or six hours. And that's when we all rode in like a big van, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. What's it like just being with the uh, with the girls on like a, a trip like that? <clears throat> it's, I mean, it was a cool experience. It was cool. Um, I think for me, like, I just wish that I could talk to them. Like that we go, we can all understand and communicate, like have an actual like full conversation. But it was hard, like you know, it was fun. Like I wish I could, I could have interacted more with them, you know. Um, I don't know if that helps answer your question. No, I, no, it absolutely does. Yeah, because it's it's uh, I, yeah, I can totally totally get that. And are, are, so, are you pretty much just sleeping on the on the vans? Are you talking to to Jamie and B or what's what's going on? No, I just knocked the, I knock out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm going to go sleep now. <laughs> you know? So you had a match at KFC Hall in Japan. Uh, you teamed with uh, Jungle and Konami against B, Jamie, and Zoe. I'm guessing that's a little more comfortable with uh, English-speaking people. Yeah, so, like, it, like B was very sweet. Like, uh, she was very helpful as well. And with Jamie as well, uh, Zoe. I have to give a lot of credit to Zoe, to be honest, because she this was her second tour. And mm -hmm. when I got there, to be honest, she was the, she was the one that really kind of helped me get around Japan. Um, because I would have been lost without her. Like, you know, I would have been lost. And, like, Jamie was doing her own thing. So 
Zoe, like the first month, she really was the one that like kind of took me to places. I feel bad. I'm sorry if I was annoying, Jamie. Uh, if I was annoying, Sky, I'm really sorry. But I do want to thank you because you did help me get around Japan. So, yeah, <laughs> have to, have to, I have to give her the credit because she helped me out, helped me a lot. Did you get to do touristy type stuff while you were over there? Ah, I mean, we we try to explore like when we could. Uh -huh. Um, like. We went to um, Wrestle Kingdom, like around that area. Uh -huh. That was really cool. Like all the shops and everything. Um, like the one experience I had that was really cool, man, was I got to actually see uh, Wrestle Kingdom live. Like I got to go to the show. Oh, wow. Like Will Osprey helped us out with that, you know? So that was a surreal moment. Like I couldn't believe it. Like it was amazing, you know? Have you been well, to a WrestleMania before? I have actually, yes. How would you compare the two? I, I've not been to a Wrestle. I've been to Rus WrestleManias, but I've never been to a Wrestle Kingdom. How, how would you compare the two? Oh, God, I love WWE, but Wrestle Kingdom was absolutely incredible. Uh, I would say it was better. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I would say it was better. Like it was just, uh, it was incredible. It was incredible, and also because like. I love Japanese wrestling. Like I love their style. So, just just to see how it was, it was different. Like the wrestling was different, you know. Mm -hmm. So to me, I was like in heaven. I was like, yes, this is my style. This is amazing. And it was just so cool to be in a rest in the dome, like the Tokyo Dome. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Like, oh, I have, like she was talking about it. It was amazing. Oh, uh. I don't, I've, I've only seen baseball games there. I've never seen a, a wrestling show there. But yeah, so, someday I'll go, go see a wrestling show there as well. You, you got it. It's electric. You got to go see it. You got yeah. to see, see a baseball game there, too. It's pretty electric as well. It's pretty neat. I do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, I, I wanted to see a baseball game. Yeah. Did they have the beer girls there when you were uh, for the Wrestle Kingdom? Beer girls? Like little girls running around like little kegs on their back, like pouring beer for everybody? Oh man, no, I didn't see that. Oh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a pretty cool. It's a unique Japanese experience. It's pretty cool. So yeah, they have these little. Uh, they're not girls. They're they're young women that run around with little mini kegs on their back and, and serve beer to the fans. Oh, that's really cool. I yeah. No. Okay. Uh, and your, like, ne your next tour. Ahead. No, your next tour. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, next tour. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when did you, when did you find out you're going to be part of Tokyo Cyber Squad? Okay, so I think so. It was before Kirkin Hall. We had the show. We had like a conference meeting, or that's what you call it, right? We, like mm -hmm. we had a conference meeting. So we had like the reporters and everything, and it was it was Hannah. She was the one. We were sitting at a table, and it was her Rossi, and she looks at me, and she was like, "Layla, do you want to be part of Tokyo Cyber Squad?" <laughs> and at first I was like, wait, what are you talking about? Like what? And then I was like, are you asking me? Like, I, I figured it'd be like something like they would decide, like, you're you're here, you're here, you know what I mean? Like, you know. But she was like, Yeah, would you want to be part of Tokyo Cyber Squad? And I was like, Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, it was that's literally how we came up about. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I didn't expect <laughs> that at all. You know, I was just like, oh, whatever. Like, what they put me, they put me. But like the fact, like Hannah asked me, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, <laughs> really cool. Had you had many interactions with her before that? Hannah? Yeah. No, I never met her. And to be honest, I didn't really know a lot of the Stardom girls. Like, shame on me, but like, I really didn't know. But I like, I mean this with with everything. Like, when I first got there, she was the she was the first one that made me feel welcomed. Mm. She was just, man, she was so outgoing and like, just, ah, oh man, what a big personality. Um, so I thank her a lot. And because like, out of all the girls, she spoke the best English. She yeah. Spoke, I got to, yeah, I got to meet her a couple of times and she's, yeah, she spoke way, way more English than, than most of the other ones did. And, and yeah, she's a super, super sweetheart. So how, how proud were you to see her at, at Russell kingdom? Yeah, that was the other thing I wanted to say. Like, it was pretty cool because uh, that was like history in the making right there. Mm -hmm. You know, first time ever. And it was amazing. Like, I just couldn't believe, like, I was getting to witness all this. You know, I really <laughs> couldn't. I was like, is this really happening? 
but it was just so cool because like you could just feel like how excited they were and like like Rossi, I, I can't just I can't even imagine like how proud of how proud he was of the girls. And it was really awesome to see it. Like it was really cool. And yeah, and you were there to see it all. That's awesome. That's that's because you because it, yeah. it was right after the KFC Hall show, you guys all took off and went over to the, the Tokyo Dome. Yes, yes, exactly. And uh, that's a that's a whirlwind <laughs> like few days for you. I like I'm telling you, man, like I, I got so lucky and like, you know, uh, like I said, Will really like he helped us out a lot in Japan. I know there was some stuff about him, but he like he treated us really well. Um, and the fact that he was able to get us passes to Wrestle Kingdom, um, like I said, like that's like a once in a lifetime experience, I feel like, you know, like that that's not every day that's gonna happen for you. So yeah. uh it was very like surreal. Um yeah. <laughs> So you kind of got to settle in a little bit after that, after the the Tokyo Dome day. You, you got a little time to settle in. So, like with day to day training with Stardom, what's that? Were you part of day to day training to go in, in in fitness training and wrestling training? Um. Oof, okay, so I think when we did training, it was like maybe three times a week, mm-hmm. and. Uh, is it my, is it Mayu doing the training or is it Jungle or who's who's doing the training right now? It was Jungle. It okay. was Jungle. Um, and I don't know how honest I can be, but like, I the training wasn't what I expected it to be. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like I uh, for like when it comes to like the gym, I uh, signed up for like Anytime Fitness. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the training, like we train maybe three times a week or two times a week, uh, and you know. It was good, but like it's not what I expected it to be. Were you expecting the hardcore a million Hindu squats a day kind of training? Yeah, um, yeah, it just wasn't what I expected it to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. But so yeah. people tell me Jungle is kind of a a leader in the in the locker room. Did you see that from her as well? Yeah, yeah, uh, and. The funny thing, it's like even Jamie and B told me they were like, you know, when you get there, like some of them just they have to like warm up to you. You know, it's like you have to like earn their respect and everything, which I totally get it. Um, but yeah, so like once I I joined Jungle and, you know, Tokyo Cyber Squad, you know, they were really nice and like polite to me. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say Jungle is a leader. Yeah, they all looked up to her, you know. Who Who is like a, a legit not a- uh, pun intended, a legit badass in training that you saw. You know, like you don't, you might not think this person's a badass, but they're like, they're a badass training. Mm. Um, I think Mayu was very badass. Yeah. Mayu. Um, How did she get dropped on her neck so often? <laughs> dude, man, like, that's the other thing. Like, I don't know how these girls keep going and going. Like, I was just so surprised because even like the younger one, oh man, you know who really impressed me? Azumi. Mm. Azumi, oh my gosh, she's only like 17 years old and she's so good. <laughs> I was like, this is so she's, been, she's been wrestling half her life. <laughs> I know she has, but I was like, this is not fair. <laughs> but her sort of like kid, they, they, Wow, they can move. And uh, I really loved uh, Ida. Did I say her name right? Right, mm-hmm. Ida? Yeah. I really enjoyed her. Because, like, first, I felt good because, like, you know, I wasn't, like, the shortest person there. Like, <laughs> they were my height. So I was like, this is awesome. But Ida, like, I was very impressed with her. Like, I just loved her attitude. Like, she was so sweet and kind. But, like, you could see, like, the passion she has for wrestling, you know? Um, they're all badasses. They're all badasses. So it's interesting, like in America, wrestling, not for, for most wrestlers, is uh, a part-time kind of like day job, part-time train and have matches on the weekends. In Japan, for a lot of these women, it's it's their full-time job. What, what kind of advantage do you think they have by having wrestling be their full-time job? Oh, man, I feel like they're set, like for life now (laughs) (laughs) like yeah that's the crazy part like that is their full-time job that's all they do and you know it's it's crazy because like i feel like they have to juggle a lot of stuff like they go they have to go to school you know some like sometimes we'd be wrestling 
And then the girls would come in, but like they had like their school outfits on. And I just give them so much credit for that. You know, like I said, like a Zoomy, only 17 years old, but like, oh my God, so good. So like, it's an advantage for them, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's an advantage and a disadvantage in, in a way, because like, to be honest, for a lot of them, I felt bad because like, they're so beat up, you know? Mm -hmm. And like a Zoomy, only 17 years old, they would all get taped up. And I'm just like, I don't know if I could do that. Like, you know, like I'm 23 years old and like I've had my share of injuries as well. But like it, it kind of just broke my heart to see like these girls every single day, every match to get taped up. And like, you know, that was kind of hard to see. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's their child bodies taking yeah. adult yep. imp impacts, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I give them credit, man. But like the one thing is they, they love wrestling. There's so much passion there. So it was cool to be around that, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, Donald Del Mondo was formed while you were there and you got uh, some matches against, uh, against them. Uh, Julia gets a lot of hate on the internet for, for making the jump from ice ribbon to stardom. What's, uh, what's Julia like outside and inside the ring? Oh, she's very cool. Uh, it's so funny. She's really cool. Um, in the ring, like, I don't know how long she's been wrestling for. I don't know. I think. Not a super long time either. Yeah. So, you know, like, when I trained her a little bit, like, um, she was good, you know? Like, she was, like, um, she was a cool chick to train with. Like, you know, like, not cocky or anything. Like, you know, like, very mm -hmm. respectful. And outside of it, she's very cool. And um, when I went, like, when I worked out and everything, I, sometimes I would see her there. And it was just so funny because a lot of them, like, were very impressed with, like, how big my legs were. Like, how, like, big they were, you know? So it was just so funny that one day she, like, looks at me and she's like, I could tell she was like, how do you, like, how are your legs so big, you know? <laughs> and she even had a trainer with her. And I'm pretty sure she was talking about my legs, <laughs> you know? So it was just cool. Like, when I see her at the gym, I'm like, hey, you know. But she was very sweet. Um, like, let, let's squat together. Let's yeah, let's let's squat together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Did you ever like get involved or, or hear any weird stories about like Joshi wrestling politics? I, I've learned a little bit about it by doing this podcast. About uh, I get hate from people sometimes because I talk to some people and they don't want to talk to me anymore. Did you get, hear anything weird about Japanese Joshi politics at all? To be honest, no. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. Like, I'll be honest, like, before, like, going to stardom, I didn't really didn't know much about stardom. Like, I knew, like, it was a big deal, but I didn't really know anything about the girls. Like, shame on me for that, you know, because I say I love Japanese wrestling, but I just, I learned a lot when I actually got there, and got to know the girls, you know? So, I'm I sorry ig about that. <laughs> ignorance is bliss, though. That's that's fine, you know? It, it's It's better not to know some things, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree with you. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Stardom World's pretty cool. They got those little promos and stuff they show. What's it like to shoot those promos with uh, the rest of Tokyo Cyber Squad? Oh, my God, man. <laughs> um, At first, I was, like, nervous because, first, like, I'm still learning how to do promos. Like, I'm not the best at it, you know. But uh, it was actually fun because... To be honest, like half the times they just talked and I just like had to pretend I knew what they were talking about, but I never did. <laughs> I was like nodding, you know, like I, I posted this like with Hannah, like a lot of the times they would end it on yes, sir. And <laughs> I would never get it. I would just never get it because I was like, Hannah, can you give me like a little Iggy? And <laughs> nope, it was just yes. And I just I could never do it, man. Was she just ribbing you just to make sure you look silly on, on the promos? I don't know, you know, uh. But it just it happened all the time, all the time. I don't think I once got it right. <laughs> it's frustrating. I was like, I, I was like to handle, like, I promise you, I'll get it. I will get it, okay? But mm. no, it's 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 funny because it, it's funny watching you watch them while they're doing the promos because that, that when I watch your <laughs> when I watch I watch you. I'm not watching them just because I see you nod and like, there's no way she knows what they're talking about. Zero percent chance. <laughs> Of course, no. <laughs> I'm so clueless. <laughs> are they are they like one takers or do they have to like do multiple takes or how does that work? 
I, to be honest, if anything, like we would only we would take it multiple times because of me, not because of them. It was of me. <laughs> but for the most part, yeah, it was the one take. And again, yeah, because I didn't have to talk. But so I think if I had to talk, it'd be like three takes, four takes. So it's a good thing they talked. <laughs> they could have just put like subtitles for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could have, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like thinking, thinking subtitles, like this is what Layla's thinking, and just put the words below your face. <laughs> oh my, yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. So one really crazy thing about stardom is merchandise sales. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tell me, because I've experienced it a few times over at uh, Kirkin and stuff. Just how crazy is it the amount of merchandise these women sell at these shows? Oh, I get so jealous. I was like, can I sell this much? You know, there it's amazing, man. Because first, like, like the one thing is the fans are very loyal. That's the one thing I got. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we would have like when I was there, man, like I think, well, before the pandemic, I had like 28 shows scheduled, you know? So I'm thinking like a lot of these fans are the same fans, but every time after the show, like Hannah. My, you, all these girls, they would get insane amount of people waiting just to get their signatures, you know? Yeah, signatures that people already have, like, 20 of. Yes, and I was just like, wow, it's amazing. It was crazy, you know? And it was so, like, I kind of felt cool because, like, they were organized and, like, they had, like, our names, um, like, where we were supposed to be. And they had, like, our names and everything printed out. So that was cool. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it was pretty crazy, but I was like, it's, it's pretty cool how loyal these fans are to them. Like, And they bring like nice gifts to them some, sometimes too and stuff. It's pretty, yes. pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. They bring a lot of stuff to them. The only thing I got was like a dessert. <laughs> <laughs> you must, you must have looked hungry. I don't know. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> but it was cool. Cause I did, I got a few fans, you know, that came up to me and, you know, complimented me. So that was really cool, you know. Um, and I don't know how true this is. I've heard this from a couple of different people. Like, a big part of their in- the wrestler's income is through the merchandise. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, I don't know how all this works for them. Because I don't know if they get all the money. I don't think so. Oh, I'm uh, sure there's some sort of split, yeah. Yeah, so I don't, yeah. But, yeah, I, I believe that. So do you know, like, okay, WWE wrestlers are pretty well off financially, but do you know how, like, well off, and I don't need to know exact dollars or anything like that, because I'm probably, you don't, you don't even know, or, or will probably want to know, but do they live pretty comfortable lives as full-time wrestlers over there? I don't, I feel like I want to say yes. I don't know. Um, I don't really know. I, I kind of, I think for the most part, yeah, I think a lot of them kind of do live okay. But I, you know, I don't know. Because I've talked to some non-stardom wrestlers, and some of them have to have, like, part-time jobs. But I, <laughs> stardom's not really open to me too much about interviewing some of their, their women yet. I'm, yeah, working, on, I'm yeah. working on that. But they're, they're, they're pretty, you know, tight with who they uh, submit or allow interviews with. But, yeah. yeah, I'm just curious about that, how, you know, how comfortable living they can make. Because Japan's not a cheap place to live either. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm just curious about that. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite wrestlers in the world is uh, Natsu. Um, t- tell me about Natsu. She's awesome. Um, I'm in love with her. Yeah, she's so. <laughs> I'm in love I with her think... as, a, as a performer. I'm in love with her. Yeah, I think she's very entertaining. Um, yeah, she was like one of my favorites. Like, she was just so cool and like. I don't know, man. Yeah, I really, I, I loved her. Uh, she's very cool to me. Uh, and it was cool because when we could get to a retirement show, it was, we had to go to Asaka and it was me, Natsu, Azumi, and, oh my God, who's that? Natsuko? Is it Natsuko? Maybe. No, it was Ida, Ida. Okay. So it was four of us, uh, and, you know, when once we got to Asaka, we went to the hotel, like, you know, I asked the girls, like, if they were going to go out to eat, and, like, so I went with them, and, um, oh, my God. Okay, I'm getting excited, but Korean barbecue, <laughs> not to go oh. time, but Korean barbecue. Oh, my God, so good. 
so so good and like i've never like had tongue cow or any of that stuff you know so i was like iffy but oh my god once i had it i was like guys have just like ruined my life <laughs> but so it was just nice because like the girls like they paid for me oh wow like, when I went out, like they paid for the Korean barbecue and I was like, no, no, let me pay. So then I was like, you know what? I love crepes and oh my God, crepes in Japan. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, I'm getting so excited about the food right now. Oof. Um, when, but... I was talking to, when I was talking to Domi last week, she was kind of the same thing. We started talking about food. And we're like, oh my goodness, we're missing Japan because we want to go eat food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was just so like, they're very respectful because I was like, you know what, guys? Like, you paid for my uh, bar Korean barbecue, so I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna get you all of you crepes. And Natsu was like, no, 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 no. Like, please don't. Like, please. And I'm like, no. Like, let me get you food. Like, you know. But they were like very against that. Like, no, oh, don't pay for us. And I was like, no, I'm paying for you. I'm getting you crepes. <laughs> it's a very American thing that you know for us to to want to like pay for stuff. You know, but it, it, I, I've experienced similar things over there as well, where people want to like pay for me for everything. I'm like, no, 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 I can, it's a fine, I can pay too. Yeah, but you know, but yeah, like Natsu, she was just like, she like, she was like, thank you so much, and I was like, yeah, of course, guys. But yeah, she's very sweet, man, very sweet. Uh, yeah. So, partying, having fun outside the ring. I, I heard a story about you and. Uh, oh boy. Oh yeah. Boy. Yep, here we go. I'm scared. Let's hear it. Let's let's hear the story. Was, was it the Sky Tree or was it the Tokyo Tower? Oh boy. Uh huh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sky. Uh, Sky Tree. I think. I think. I know what you're gonna say, but yes, I'm gonna say Sky Tree. What's the story? Uh, you were running around the Sky Tree and had a few. Was was it strong zeros? Oh my God! Yep, yep. Okay, I'll confirm it. Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. Let, let, tell tell us about letting no. your hair down and relaxing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Just to tell, no, tell no, me no, the no. story. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> so stories, man. But yeah, so um, so Delmi and Masha got there. I think it was Delmi got there like late January, right? Mm -hmm. And this was my first time seeing them, and. I was like so excited. I was like, ah, oh, yes, people I actually like know, you know, like me and Masha were really cool as well before Japan, you know. So, and I've actually never had a strong zero. I've never even heard of strong zero. <laughs> so, they, so we met up in um, train station. What was the train station? They came to me, like they came to me. So, we decided to like get some drinks. So, we had strong zero. And, oh, my God, I fell in love with it. It was so good. So I'm a lightweight. I am. I will admit it. <laughs> so me, I had maybe two of those. And once, by the time we got to Sky Tree, man, I was kind of, like, tipsy. I was like, oof, okay. Like, what's going on here? And so was Masha. And so Delmi had to be our mom. <laughs> because, like, I don't think I was falling. Like, I don't know what Delmi told you. Or, like, I don't know what I remember. But, like. Yeah, me and Masha, we were just out of it. And we were just, like, doing our own thing, you know? Like, I think at one point, Masha picked me up and dropped me. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. I don't know what else you told you. Like, what else did you say? <laughs> what else did you say, huh? No, no, what was, what's your favorite Strong Zero flavor? I I think it was it was the grape. I yeah. really liked the grape, yeah. Um. <laughs> But the other cool thing about Japan is, like, you can drink on the streets. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, did, I did a little bit of that as well, yeah. Strong yeah. Zeros strong zeros killed me uh, a couple of nights over there, too. And I also, you're probably going to think, like, I'm, I'm like, don't make fun of me for this. But also, I discovered what um, Smirov, Smirov was. Those, those drinks, Smirovs? Smirnoff Ices? Yeah. I was like. I had no idea what they were until Japan, but they were amazing. So I also stuck with those. And all at little convenience stores where they're super cheap. Oh my God. 7 Eleven is the best. Oh my. Yeah. 7 Eleven, man. That was pretty cool. And you can, eat, you can eat good food at 7 Eleven over there, too. It's not like the, the rotating hot dogs and stuff. It's different. It's different. You had a lot of options. And what would I get there when I, get that, when I went there? I feel like I got the same stuff when I got there. I always got like the chicken nugget kind of things. 
Yeah, chicken nuggets. I would get ramen. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I went there almost every day. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> so I've heard that the Joshi wrestlers like to party. Uh, uh, female and male wrestlers both told me that. Do you have any other crazy stories going out and just enjoying yourselves and, and being uh, a twenty-something-year-old person traveling the world and, and enjoying your your adventure? Yeah. <clears throat> so. You, so okay, so I kind of got to bond with the girls. We we went to, uh, we went. To, it was like a vacation, you can call. We went there for a day or two. Ah, uh, what was it? What was the place? Wait, do you mind if I look it up real quick? No, go ahead. Um, Sumi helped me a lot too. She would like just give me all the information. Like you'd be going, you're gonna be doing this, that. Okay, it's called. Okay, it was. Oh, yeah. so it was, it was like a recreation trip. Mm -hmm. but it was, do you know what I'm talking about? Is it like a team building kind of trip you guys did, or? In a way, yeah, it was like a nice little vacation. All right, but anyway, so we went on this trip, and this was like my first time actually. Like, we went to a hotel. We stayed in a hotel, and it was like a Japanese hotel, like where the beds were low, low tables. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, they made us wear these. Um, I don't know, like what do you call those? Like they kind of look like ropes, but I know they're not like a, a rope that goes around you. Yeah, the traditional jab. Yeah, I know Shumba. Yeah. Okay. How did you feel uh, wearing one of those? Those look. I think women look beautiful in those. Yeah, they do, but not me. <laughs> 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 oh. I was like, oh, my God, I look so bad. Like, I'm so sorry, guys. You know, and then, like, they put their hairs in a bond. Like, Jamie pulled it off really well. And I'm just like, I look so stupid in this. <laughs> but, you know, I wore it anyway because, like, you know, whatever. And then, so we went. So in the hotel, we, we had, like, a nice dinner, right? And it was, like, the tables were set up in, like, rows. And it was so funny. Like, we, like you had to sit with, like, your group. So I had to sit with, like, Tokyo Cyber Squad in a way. Um, but it was so cool because like these girls like to drink, they love to drink. <laughs> so I was so surprised because I was like, wait, are we going to get in trouble for this? Like we could actually drink in front of Rossi, but man, yeah, they were like pouring beer and all the alcohol. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is awesome. And so it was just so cool. Like all these girls love to like drink and they did karaoke. I got to experience that with them. <laughs> um so that was cool um yes. now those are the kind of memories you I mean it, wrestling is probably sure nice but those are the kind of like people relationships you you create while you're there with with situations like that yeah so that was a really cool experience uh and then so again i have to thank will for this so will um he had he has taken up he took us to a club um, I'm I so I'm like so bad at like remembering like the club names and everything. But are you are you a club girl? You know what? I yeah, now I am. Like I don't mind at all. You know, <laughs> um, I probably couldn't do it like every day or like every weekend. But like you know, in Japan, like that was like the first time like me being at a club in Japan, and it's a popular club. I don't know if like if you know any clubs in Japan. No, nah, I'm not a club guy. <laughs> okay, okay, it's fine. But, <laughs> But it was really cool because, like, again, like, Will took care of us. He paid for everything, you know, and, like, he just, he gave us an experience, like, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to thank him a lot because he helped us out. out. And, uh, but that was a really fun night. Like, I got to experience that with some, like, the other, like, New Japan guys. Uh, and I just remember, like, that was a really fun time, you know, like. Who's crazier yeah. partiers, Americans or Japanese? Oh, man. I'm guessing it's pretty neck and neck. I, you know what? I'm going to say it's neck to neck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was neck to neck. But, like, this club was awesome. I was like, wow, what an experience this was, you know? What an experience. <laughs> uh, and it was cool because, like, I, like, I think this was my first time. Like, it felt kind of like, at times, like, I felt very lonely there. You know? Mm -hmm. You do feel that way. So... It was like nice because like when I went to the club, I was like, all right, you know, it's not too bad. Um, but it was really nice having Masha and Delmi there because like 
we made like a like a promise like every week every like sunday we met up with each other and we would just do stuff you know yeah no that's that's amazing because it's seeing people running into people from your home in a foreign country is it's pretty amazing you know it's like it's crazy yeah and it's pretty cool because like you can say like wow like who who would have ever thought like we would be here that we would make it here and it's just really nice you know like you said like i like i don't know if you know who jay freddy is Uh uh-huh yeah so he was also really nice because he was like he's been there a ton of times and he like reached out to me and he was like hey like if you want like a tour or anything like let me know so i met up with him and he showed me like different i guess he was my tourist guys this time too Mm -hmm. you know he took me around and it was nice so it is a cool feeling to like meet people that are from your from the US and to be say and like to say like wow we're actually here in Japan. It's awesome. Yeah, a friend of mine and I went together one time and it was just cool experiencing things with your friends in foreign lands. It's just it's a something different, you know. It is. It is. Who are some of your favorite opponents or people you were in the ring with that you that impressed you during some matches? Uh like I said, I enjoyed Ida. Mm-hmm. Uh, Azumi, um, because when we had the high speed tournament, I was like, I didn't really know what to expect because, like, I I was kind of used to like um high paced matches, but they went really fast. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I remember I watched uh, Azumi versus Death Yamasan, which I loved. She was one of my favorites, man. Death Yamasan. Oh my gosh, she's awesome. <laughs> So I remember like when I watched their match, I was like, they just schooled all of us. Like, that's what a high speed match is. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but so facing Azumi, Death Yamsam was really fun. Starlight Kid. Um People talk a lot about like Momo and Utami. Momo, wow. Ut- yes, Momo. Yeah, Momo was cool. I th- I-, I think I got to wrestle her once though, like and mm-hmm. Yuta- I loved Yutami. She was so sweet. Ah, I loved Yutami, yeah. But to be honest, I enjoyed everybody I, I got in the ring with. I really did. And it's just amazing how good all of them are, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you get selected to do the Kagetsu show? Man, I wish I knew. <laughs> but, so, it was funny, though. Because the first the first day we had the show, right? Uh, like my first show there, I you know I met Kagetsu and you know met uh, met Mayu, just like introduced myself and everything. And I remember it was like maybe we had like twenty minutes before showtime, and I uh, I was in my gear, but I had my sweatpants on, right? Mm-hmm. And then because we were the first match, I took my sweatpants off, and I remember Kagetsu and you and uh, Mayu walking by and looking at me, and they like looked at my legs as well, <laughs> and they just gave me that look like, oh, okay. And I remember them walking by me, and they were still talking, and I could tell they were still talking at me because they would just glance at me. And honestly, I think like she was impressed with the legs, <laughs> 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 but I also think throughout like the first month they really like they saw what i was able to do like they saw what i was capable of doing that's honestly how i think it happened because i even like asked sumi i was like how is it that i'm on the show because she could have gotten anybody Mm -hmm. and you know so that to me was like pretty awesome because i think they liked how my physique as well i'm gonna Mm -hmm. say i don't know but it but i know i guess i guess was very impressed because even like throughout times like even like after the uh, after the retirement show, they had like a little party for her, and she even said to me, she was like, "I'm looking forward to like watching more of your stuff. I'm gonna watch like I'm gonna watch you wrestling." And to me, like that meant so much. I was like, "What? Like what's happening?" Because <laughs> she's a legend. She's yeah. incredible. So for me to be on her show and for her to like just say like she's gonna pay attention to me, I you know it was pretty cool. And I think your your body shape is unique, and I think that that that's very helpful for you. I think in in standing out. Yeah, you know, if, so like for the longest time, I used to like hate how short I was in my physique because I was like insecure about it. You know, I I, I got made fun of for that. Uh, but now it's like in wrestling, like 
it's an advantage. People love it. You know, people always say to me like, yeah, you have like a unique look. And so it's really cool to see that like, okay, that's not going to like put me down. That's actually going to build me up. So then COVID hits. <laughs> oh yeah. That sucked. <laughs> <laughs> That sucked. So yeah, I I was there in March. I got to go to uh, to see a little bit of stuff before everything locked down in March. But you got to do what did you guys do when they decided to start canceling shows? Okay, so the whole pand. So when did it start? Like in March? Was it like public? I think. Yeah, in public. March. In March, right? So that was like my last month there. So, um. Yeah, so I think Rossi or Sonny messaged us saying, like, the first two weeks of March was, like, the shows are being canceled or, like, postponed. But they still said, like, we were going to do Kirk and Hall. I think it was March March 8th. That show was on with, like, no mm-hmm. fans. And then I think, like, March 25th, they were still kind of on. But my uh, my parents... Oh, they were just like, they wanted me to come home. <laughs> like, they were like, Layla, like, you need to come home now. And I was fighting them on that. I was like, I can't just come home. Like, you know, like, even though some shows were canceled, we still had shows to go. Mm-hmm. You know, so to me, that was very frustrating because, like, they wanted me to come home. And because, like, I guess it went from level one to level two. And I, I'll, I'll admit at that time, I was like, this is not serious. Like, I don't know what people are, like, panicking about, you know. And, um, but then, like, I found out that, like, like Japan was, like, they're closing their schools and everything. So I messaged Rossi, and I was like, hey, man, like, you know, I'm sorry to do this, but is there a way, like, can I come home? Like, can I go home now? You know? Because if there's no shows, there's no point in me being here for another three weeks, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, he got me my flight and everything. So I had to come home two weeks earlier, um, which sucked because, like, I knew, like, if we didn't have the pandemic and we were going to have matches, I think I had a feeling like they were going to put me like, you know, they were kind of going to give me a little push. Like I was going to probably get a singles match with Jamie, like from what I heard, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was disappointed because I was like, ah, oh, I was probably going to get more good opportunities to show what I can do and capable of, you know? So that really sucked. So what day did you, did you finally end up leaving? One day. Okay. I think I left. Oh, I think it was that. So I think it was March 14th or 13th. Mm. It was a Wednesday. It was after it was that Wednesday after Kirken Hall. I think. I I got there on the 8th. I flew there. I flew into the pandemic on the 18th. (laughs) Oh, you flew into the pandemic. Nice. (laughs) I had a chance to interview Bull Nakano. I had to go. Yeah, I got I got you. (laughs) I did the same thing. (laughs) (laughs) Were the flights cheap, though? Or would it oh happen? yeah, in, in the they were completely empty, coming coming and going, just em- everything was empty. It was pretty pretty crazy. Awesome, that's great. yeah. I had a whole <laughs> whole row to myself. I could stretch out a little bit. And... Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, kind of sum up your your experience in Japan. You know, the the good, the bad. Um, what 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 would you? I'm sure you'd like to go again. Yeah, I mean, Rossi showed interest, so I know he really, that was a cool part, like, he really liked me. Uh, so he talked to me, and he was like, would you like to come back to Japan? And I was like, well, only if you'd have me back, you know, like, mm-hmm. it's not up to me, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, I learned a lot from this, you know, because the wrestling was different. Like, it wasn't what I expected it to be in a, in a way. Like, I thought it was good and bad. Um, so like, I had, like the adjusting was hard. I have to admit that it was, a, it was hard to adjust. Cause a lot of the times, like when we would like, you know, talk about the matches and everything to me, it didn't make sense mm. because I'm so used to like the psychology here in the U S you know, how we wrestle here. So a lot of times when like, they were like putting the matches together, I was like, how does, how does this make sense? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I do want to go back because I think, I would be way better. I would have more of an understanding of like what my role is, you know. Um, How much have you wrestled since you've come back? So depressing. I have not stepped in the ring in six months. That's amazing. 
but I'm going to actually go back to training this Friday. Okay. But I'm very nervous for that because <laughs> I haven't <laughs> bumped in six months. It's going to be like starting over again as far as getting your, your, ring, uh, your ring rust off. Yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can I do this? Like, oh, should I just retire now, you know? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you'll 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 bump it out. You're, you'll be fine. Yeah. Do you, do you mind if we talk a little bit about Hana? Nope. Go ahead. No. All right. So, no, no. Do you, she was filming. She was not. I guess it was it was airing while you were there. I think it started airing the show. Did did you guys know that she was on Terrace House or that was a whole thing at all? So, when you were there. To be honest, I had no idea what Terrace House was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I had no idea what it was. Um, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't know any of it until like, you know, everything went down. I was like, oh yeah. So I, I did not know. I thought she just, her job was just wrestling. I didn't know she was on a, on Terrence house at all. In publicly, she, she kept a pretty good public happy face for, for everybody. I'm telling you, man, I, you would have not suspected anything. She was, <laughs> like I said, she was like the most outgoing person, uh, the most, you know, bubbly, always like willing to talk to you, even in training, man, like in training, very comfortable with herself, you know? So yeah, to me, she seemed very like happy and outgoing. I, yeah. I and she, she transformed her body too. She was kind of a thin, thin girl before, but she's, she was an athlete. She's like bulked up and became an athlete. Yeah. She looked, yeah. She looked very healthy and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what are you thinking when you hear the news break that that she had passed away? Uh, uh, I was like, no, this is not happening because I uh, I was talking to him with Masha and it was like at 12 o'clock midnight. And, you know, it's like it, not funny, but like during, early the day, like during that day, I had saw something about fans saying, I hope Hannah's OK. And I was thinking, like, what, what, what's wrong? Like, you know, but it, I never, like, got, like, into it because I was like, oh, yeah, I'm sure she's okay, you know? Like, I never really thought about it. And then Masha messages, messages me, and she's like, hey, like, did you hear what happened? And I was like, no, like, like what, what are you talking about? And then, you know, I find out that, this, that what happened with Hannah. And I was in shock. I, like, just started crying and, like, the first person I called was Sumi because I know Sumi was so close to the Sodom girls. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I know, I never saw that coming. I didn't. Um, I was in shock, man. Uh, heartbreaking. Just so freaking heartbreaking. Yeah. Have you, have you ever experienced any sort of like online hateful talk and, and people being just mean? Online, to be honest, no. Uh, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, when I was younger, like, you know, like, people would, like, say stuff, you know, just because of the way, like, I looked and my body built, but to be honest, like, people knew not to mess with me. Like, <laughs> I set that vibe, like, right away, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, because, like, I, I know how to stick up for myself, and I just don't tolerate that shit, like, you know what I mean? I don't. Mm-hmm. Even, like, if I see somebody getting bullied, like, no, I'll be the first one to say something. Mm-hmm. So, I have never... I no verbally online. No, I've never experienced that. Um, How do you think you'd react if somebody tweeted at you and said something about your your size or things like that? How, how do you think you'd react to that? Would it would it affect you, or you don't you don't care? You know, I think the great thing now is I don't care. I used yeah. to care, and I people do still take jabs at me with that, especially like on YouTube when like people comment, mm-hmm. you know. But thankfully, at this point, no, like, I have just accepted, like, my height. I've accepted, like, just who I am. And, like, I can't do anything about it, you know? So it used to bother me a lot. I'm, like, a lot. And even still, like, when people take jabs at me, I'm just like, what's the point, man? Like, when people say, oh, my God, like, you're really short. I just want to look at them and be like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> you know? So yeah, Come here. This short person will throw you across the room. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, it's just, so, it's just like. Like getting your jokes or something, you know? Yeah. Be original. But, Be original. Think make us make fun of something else. Exactly. You know, and like <laughs> the best part is like when people come up to me, they're like, oh my God, I've never like I've never been told in anybody. So thank you, Layla. And I'm just like, shut up. Just shut <laughs> up. 
you know. But no, man. Wait man. till Aida hits her growth spurt, and then she'll be taller than you. You'll be screwed. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, I, I won't be able to stand next to her. I'd be like, "Nope, six feet apart, six feet apart." <laughs> you'll stand like when the the camera angles. You'll be standing in front of her, so you look a little bit taller than her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give me like a step stool, but don't show the step stool, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, no man. Thankfully, I've never experienced that. That's why I just, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I don't understand. Like, I didn't understand. I didn't understand at all. Um. And then, like, I talked to Jamie a little bit as well because they're so they were so close to Hannah, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I was just, I even asked her. I was like, "Did you see this coming?" And she was like, "Not really." But Jamie knew that she was filming Terrence's house, mm-hmm. and uh, she said, like, you know, like that she um, the one time Hannah like because Jamie like noticed something with Hannah, and she did, she was like asking her like, "Hey, are you okay?" And she said like, "No, I'm stressed with Terrence's house," you know. Mm-hmm. but yeah it's it's tough i didn't i just i just right away i just thought about you know hannah's mom and the stardom girls because you know and it, like they're family they are they're family yeah it's so. it, it's their work you know we spend more time with people we work with than, than our loved ones our loved ones yep mm-hmm. um even like now like you just whenever her name pops up i'm just like i'm just I just can't believe that she's not here because, man, she would have ruled the world. She would have ruled, you know, wrestling. She was incredible, mm-hmm. incredible. And like like people say, like, she has accomplished, she already had accomplished so much. Yeah, and she, she just had the look. She she was getting really good in the ring, too. You know, she, she again, she hasn't been wrestling that long either, but she was getting really good in the yeah. ring. She, 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 had, she had it all. She could have had it all. Yeah, so yeah. it was just, it's heartbreaking, I it's, yeah, you know, it's like, it's just weird because, like, if I ever do go back to Japan, like, man, I, you know, you, you're going to know, like, she's missing. Like, you know, like, I just, mm. it's going to be weird, like, being in Japan, like, being with stardom and not having her there, you know? Yeah. So. So, like, you got training coming up this week for the first time. Do you, do you have any matches booked at all? I What's do, actually. Place? I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it. That's all, No, you don't have to say it. That's fine. But, Yeah. So but it's it's start it's starting to come back a little bit for you though. A little bit, yeah, because like I had all opportunities, but I was like, no, it's okay. And also because like my mom's very like neurotic about it, <laughs> so you know, I just I guess try to like kind of respect her. But you know, I'm going to start getting tested regularly, so you know, mm-hmm. I can say I'm all, I'm clear. You know, all good. Have you gotten a test yet? No, I'm I'm actually going to go this Wednesday. I got one a couple of weeks ago. It's it's not so bad. It's not right. And how no, long? They- did- how long did it take for your results to come back? Three days. Okay, it's not bad. No. Yeah, they just stick a little Q-tip up your nose on both nostrils for like 30 seconds, and that's that's pretty much it. What, 30 seconds? I can't handle that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't they do like a mouth swab, too? I, I only had the nose one. I don't know about the mouth one, but I only had the nose one. The nose one wasn't bad. It's not like they shove it up your brain or anything, either. It's just a little bit like just to the top of your nose and stuff. So. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm scared. <laughs> 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 Big tough Layla Hirsch is uh, afraid of a Q-tip, huh? Yeah, I really get suplex to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and Layla, where can we where can we find you on social media? Uh so I'm on Facebook, Layla Hirsch, Twitter, legit Layla Hirsch, Instagram, legit Layla Hirsch. Um yeah, I think that's where. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I thank you so much for your time. I'm glad we finally got to talk. Uh, I'm sending Delmi some strong zeros. I might throw one in there for you. Oh, please, man. Yes, please. <laughs> please. Because <laughs> I don't know if you can... Um, I don't think you can get them here. It's only in Japan, right? Yeah, I had to order them off eBay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know. they're supposed to come this week. I'm going to throw an extra one in there. Let uh, Don't let Delmi drink it. Make sure you grab it from her. Okay, I will let her know. <laughs> Well, again, thank you so much, Layla. Yeah, thank you. I hope I can do another podcast with you. This was thank fun. you. Thank you so much. I'm telling you, I miss the bad things.